Good afternoon, lovelies. Uh, Zoe 2 here with some more Pokemon-ish goodness. So today we are hitting up the new Pokemon movie, uh, the Pokemon movie, I Choose You. So heading up with the Pokemon squad, gonna go to the arcade and play some games first and then get into the new movie. Um, pretty excited to see this one. Um, I have read nothing about it uh, except for it kind of like compresses part of the original story with like Ash getting his Pikachu um, and that's all I know. I don't know what the plot for the movie is at all, so going in blind. But I will do for you guys a mild review uh, afterwards, I think. Just um, my thoughts and impressions on the movie. But we're going to go in, play some arcade stuff, um, and just hang out with the squad and then go see some Pokemon movies. Also, how good is this shirt? I haven't had a chance to wear it yet. I picked it up at like Supernova. Um, and it is like a really cute summer crop, but with uh, like Pokeballs and Team Mystic on the tummy. Whoop. Love it. It's really cute. <laughs> So we just finished up with the movie, um, I think I'm going to think on it before I give like a really detailed review, um, it was good, the pacing was odd, uh, and there was a lot of crying, like a lot of Pokemon crying the whole time, so it was a very weird emotional journey, um, but I think I'm going to think on it. Uh, maybe sleep on it and then come back in with a, a bit of a detailed review and try not do any spoilers or anything like that. So let's think. Okay, let's talk review of the Pokemon movie. So like overall, I think the movie was okay. Like it was good. It was fine. Um, I mean, tops, I'd be giving it like a five or six out of 10. Um, it wasn't groundbreaking. It wasn't revolutionary. It was just a Pokemon movie. Um, for kids, basically. It's a fun kids Pokemon movie. So I don't want to go into spoilers just yet. So I'm going to make it very, very clear what I do go into spoiler territory. Um, so I'm going to go through positives, negatives, and then the spoiler zone. So I'll make it very, very clear. So if you don't want to hear any spoilers, you'll know when to click off. So you can, you're, stay, you're safe for now. Uh, if you're fine with just general plot-ish stuff. Um, so yeah. Uh, first of all, the positives. Uh, first positive was the promo card, um, the really cute little Ashes Pikachu with the little hat on. Promo card, super adorable, always a fan of promo cards, yes please. Um, the story does a pretty good job of doing like a, a soft reboot or a soft retelling of um, Ash Ketchum's original story in the original series. So it's pretty much just going over reintroducing Ash, Ash gets his new Pikachu, um, or his first ever Pokemon that is a Pikachu, um, how they form their friendship, um, and a really kind of compressed telling of the first season, so the Indigo League. Um, and it, it does that in a pretty in a pretty compressed way, um, but I mean, if you are new to the series or new to the Pokemon world in general, uh, if you're a new kid and this is like your first Pokemon movie, it is kind of just like getting you in there and showing you who's who in the zoo for Ash Ketchum. And as is to be expected with all of the Pokemon movies, um, I'm pretty sure they've said before that the Pokemon movies aren't canon, so things that happen in the Pokemon movie don't affect the actual like series uh, timeline or anything like that. So um, if anything happened in this movie that you don't like, it's okay because it doesn't really count towards the actual lore of um, the Pokemon universe. So yeah, I think as a positive, it's a really good like introduction for people who have no idea um, what's like this is might be their first introduction to the Pokemon universe. So I think it's a pretty good like soft entry into that. On the um like the compressed retelling of uh, the Indigo Sea League, um, there's kind of like the the Charmander storyline is in there, the Butterfree storyline is in there, um, and you know Ash and Pikachu's friendship building that story arc are kind of to some extent each covered in that. Uh, in the first half of the movie. I think the integration of new Pokemon, so new generation Pokemon into the story was really, really smooth. Um, they didn't just do like a reboot of the Indigo League and just pretend like, oh, we just haven't found these other 800 Pokemon. Like, no, they um, included Pokemon like um, Incineroar and uh, Luxray and um, 
Lycan Rock and Piplup, and those were pretty smooth. Like, they were owned by other main characters and things like that, so it was a fairly smooth um, inclusion of all the Pokemon that exist today. Um, they didn't just pretend that, oh, it's the first season, so we're not only going to use first generation Pokemon. Um, you know, they go over the legendary beasts, Entei, Suicune, um, and Raikou, and then also Ho-Ho is the overarching, like, story plot line is um you know in the first episode of pokemon ever in the first ever season uh ash sees oh flying across and the whole uh you know picks up a feather and uh the whole movie plot is following that journey to find ho -Oh. so yeah a good combination of all different generations of pokemon um and really kind of smoothly done that's kind of all the positives i had for just straight up like it's good it's a it's an all right movie it's fine um now on to the negatives. So one of the main negatives is just kind of like a little bit of an annoying point, more so than like, oh my god, this was terrible. Um, so one little negative was that Team Rocket was literally just shoehorned into the movie. Like they were like, oh, how can we put them in? Oh, we'll just give them like three lines every 15 minutes. We'll just like smash them in. They'll have no interaction with Ash, they'll have no interaction with the other trainers um, at all. It's just going to be uh, Jesse, James and Meowth saying one witty line and getting blasted off again by some indirect action. So I think it's really disappointing because Team Rocket have always been my favourite, well some of my favourite characters, um, especially in like the original movies and like um, Pokemon 2000 is my absolute favourite. In Pokemon 2000 they have like this really witty dialogue, um, lots of jokes and there's um, interaction between like them and Ash and Misty and Brock and it's like... Um, they have a purpose like they're there still trying to you know get pikachu or still trying to catch the legendary pokemon um in this movie they're just kind of hanging around near ash and the other trainers but they never interact they just like say something and then fall off a cliff uh or say something and then get knocked by onyx into space like there's not there's literally no purpose for them to be there you could remove every team rocket um iteration in that movie you could remove it and you wouldn't lose anything for the plot for the story for anything there's no purpose for them to be there which is a shame because i really really like team rocket and they were just kind of like shove them in like how can we pad this movie a little bit more we'll just shove in like 10 minutes worth of irrelevant team rocket stuff so that was a bit of a shame so the next comment would be the pacing um i know like i do watch a a, a reasonable amount of kids movies like I've got young nieces and nephews and things like that and young cousins I've watched a lot of kids movies plus I just like Disney and stuff like that I will watch kids movies um the pacing was really really weird and I was like is this a kids movie thing like are they just got this wild pacing because it's like you know keeping kids attention I don't think I've ever experienced a movie that just felt so jarring between every scene it was like the the first like three gym like okay um, the main bit of the movie kind of starts where, you know, Ash has got his Pikachu, blah, blah, blah. The, ne the next plot point um, after Ash and Pikachu are best buddies all of a sudden uh, is Ash getting his third uh, gym badge. So they've completely jumped over the first two gyms. They've written uh, Ash and Brock out of the story completely. Um, he's getting his third gym badge. And then the next scene, you know, there's... Um, next scene hard cut to uh oh my god all of a sudden like someone's seen Entei in the forest oh my god like hard cut to for some reason we're all crying now again something really dramatic's happened and we're crying oh hard cut everything's really wonderful well, no sorry it's not literally a hard cut but the scenes are very short and very compressed and then we're trying to cover all these points in the first season um, but really like condensing them in so there's something really exciting and a Pokemon evolves and it's beautiful oh no something really sad is happening and everyone's crying and Pokemon are crying and you're like oh my god my feelings and then something really good happens oh it's so magical and then something really oh my god that's so sad it's just taking on this really jarring emotional journey um because you just kind of like you put yourself in that like oh I'm gonna just be open to this movie and receive it and then you know you want to be open to um you know, the emotional plot points and be like, oh wow, that is really sad. But when it's just taking you on this like crazy up and down, I was like, I don't know where my emotions are supposed to be. Like I was about to cry two minutes ago and now all of a sudden we're good and now I'm going to cry again. Like what is going on with the the tone of the movie was just so, mm. and I'll get into that a little bit more with some spoiler-ish stuff because I think it might be borderline spoiler, but I don't want to be, I don't want to ruin anyone's day. Next for negatives, what is up with the horrific battle typings? There, every single battle that happens in this movie whatsoever is between ineffective type combinations or Pokemon that should be effective against each other using ineffective moves. 
Like, who makes this movie? Who writes the script? Do you know how, like, you know, fire beats grass? Water is weak against grass. Like, who was writing this? Like, what? There's, like, a battle between Pikachu and Piplup. An electric type and a water type. And Pikachu didn't use an electric move. He could have obliterated the Piplup. All he uses is Thunderbolt. For every other battle. Even when it's not effective. And he doesn't use it this one time against the one where it would work. It's just... It blows my mind. Every single battle in this movie did not have type effective moves being used. So it's just kind of like... And not even... Not even like neutrally effective. Things that were at a disadvantage or um, Pikachu using electric type moves against rock and ground type Pokemon where it's just not going to do anything. So, I mean, like, it's 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 a small point, but it's just for, like, the actual Pokemon fans, it's like, come on, guys. Come on. We've been playing these DS games for a while now and these Game Boy games. Like, we know we're not supposed to use that move against that Pokemon, so... Yeah. I think I'm going to move the next bit into spoiler territory just because it's not going to be... So the first bits aren't going to be major plotline spoilers. Um, I just... If you haven't seen the movie and you don't, you don't want to know anything, like, this is where... This is where you stop. Hope you have a lovely day. Catch you in the next one. But um, we're going into the spoiler zone. So... Beep, boop, boop, spoiler zone. Turn off now. So, spoiler-ish stuff. Um... The whole point of the movie is Ash is working his way up to the mountain to go find Oo and battle it and be like the rainbow champion, like whatever that is supposed to mean, really, because they just kind of like shoved that in there as well as a plot line. Um, everything happens. Okay, maybe I'll start on the other point. Um, Marshadow is basically introduced into this movie as well because, hey, new Pokemon Marshadow, let's put him in the movie. Um, they... It's cute. Like, Marshall is cute. It's good to see him in action. The whole, um, like, as the movie's progressing, Marshadow is uh, explained to be, like, this guardian and guide for the um, rainbow champion. Like, so the, the feather that Ash has is the rainbow feather or the rainbow wing, um, and he has to take that to the top of the mountain, put it in the rock, and then Oh Oh will appear, and ooh, yeah, you get to battle Ho Ho. Um, I don't know how I say Oh 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 Ho Ho. You get to battle the big golden bird. Marshadow is supposed to be this guide, so if anything's going wrong, or if you're not, you know, going on your way as you should be, or you're trying to, like, have a... You're losing heart or faith, Marshadow's like, come on, let's go, let's keep going, let's on this beautiful journey, and, like, we're gonna make everything fine. It gets up to a point where Ash is gonna go stick the feather in the rock, and then Cross, the, the kid nemesis, his name is Cross, uh, grabs the feather from Ash, runs up, and sticks it in the rock, and because uh, Cross is uh, evil of heart or impure of heart, uh, this is a really bad time. So he sticks it in, everything's going all dark and swirly, so it's apparently Marshadow's job to go and grab the feather and make everything right again. Like, that's what it said in the in the story. Like, there's a guardian who makes sure that the balance is right. So you think that Marshadow goes, no, you don't. I'm going to take this feather and give it back to Ash, and here you go, good boy, put it in the rock. No. <laughs> Uh, Marshadow grabs the feather and then decides, I want to kill everyone. I'm going to go on a murder spree and, like, possess all these Pokemon and have them just blow the shit out of all you humans. So that was, um, unexpected and, I don't know, unnecessary. Marshadow seemed like a cool dude, um, until that point. So, really unusual, considering the whole time they're saying Marshadow's this guardian that's going to keep the balance right and then just goes on a murder spree So I don't know if it's a just a really poor translation or localization between the Japanese and English if there was more nuance in How it was supposed to be explained and they just kind of watered it down to be Easier to digest for a younger audience. I don't know. So, uh, you know battle ensues They come off. I don't know how victorious like Okay, major spoiler Ash dies um, and for whatever reason, after he dies, everyone just stops for oh, Pikachu does this big show of like, oh, I love you and we're all great. And then for whatever reason, Marshadow just stops wanting to kill everything. For whatever reason. Um, and yeah, there's, li there's literally no explanation as to why he stops going on his murder spree. Um, but Ash is like dying. Uh, Pikachu's there with him and the biggest spoiler so please if you've made it this far and you really don't want this is like the weirdest thing and you're going to know what this is if you've seen the movie the weirdest thing for spoiler wise Pikachu talks what 
and it's never addressed <laughs> they're just like okay pikachu talks uh and says something and it's really just like rips you right out of like the emotion of the scene because you're like oh my god like this is an emotional scene between like pikachu and ash and oh like so sad i'm getting all emotional and then all of a sudden pikachu's like i just want to be with you and you're like what excuse me and then like Ash goes through his like dream sequence and coming back to life and being reincarnated and then it's like it's not like oh Pikachu spoke to me what was that was that the magic of Oh oh was that the magic of Marshadow was that just like a, a thing you do when you're dying it's just not addressed they don't bring it up ever again it's just like Pikachu literally speaks at him and then it's never addressed is it like a dream is he hallucinating is it like supposed to be a metaphor for their connection and like it could have literally been like Pikachu's voice in his head speaking without Pikachu's mouth moving. But its mouth moves. But it's never explained. Is it, is it the power of friendship? Was it love all along? Was that the, the miracle that was inside us all along? Like it's just not explained. So I don't know. And it was just like everyone in the cinema was like... Like, every adult audibly said, what the fuck? And every child was like, did Pikachu just speak? Mum? Like, it was just so out of place. And I'm going to say pretty much unnecessary. It could have been, like, a really gentle, like, metaphor, like, in between their minds. Like, a, you know, a telepathic, like, almost bond. No, not literal telepathy, but just, like, this un mutual understanding of... That's why Pikachu wants to be around me all the time, not like ah, la 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 actually talking, so that was just weird. But um it is what it is, I suppose. I, you know, they they win, everything's great. Um Marshadow gives him back the feather or gives him a new one. He whacks in the rock. Oh well appears. Don't get excited because you don't get to see the battle, you get to see like two moves and then you cut out and there's just little flashes happening in the mountain and then cut to the Pokemon Center where he's getting his Pokemon held up. So you don't get to see much of Oh anyway, so yeah, very weird. Very, very weird. Um, the only other points that I had pretty much was uh, with the, the Charmander kind of storyline. Um, very, very compressed. Like, just, like, evolves every 10 seconds. And just, like, it, it very, yeah, fast-paced for him as well. And the Butterfree storyline, I don't think really needed to be in there. Um, once again, hey, I've got a Caterpie. Oh, no, oh, wow, it's a Metapod now. Now it's Butterfree. Butterfree's got to go make babies. Like, see you later, Butterfree. Like, that the Bye Bye Butterfree episode in the original like series was emotional, but it took you on this journey of being with the Pokemon for like episodes and episodes and episodes, and it built. Um, it wasn't just literally an hour's or less than an hour's worth of like relationship building. And then, oh, bye, mate. And everyone's supposed to be crying upset. And you're like, oh, my God. What am I supposed to be feeling right now? Like, I'm feeling all these different things. Mm. But, yeah, look. I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It wasn't a great movie. It was just, like, it was fun to go out with friends and go catch a movie. And it was Pokemon, so it was enjoyable. Um, <laughs> it was different, though. It was very different. But, um, I don't know, maybe if I go back and watch Pokemon 2000, I'll be, like, more critical of that. You know, that's my favourite movie, but it also has, like, a big nostalgia tie-in. So, I don't know, maybe watching that back, I'd be like, wow, jeez, like, you thought that was rough. Like, cop Pokemon 2000, but I don't know. Maybe it's great. <laughs> but, yes. Um, I mean, definitely worth a watch if you want to go see it. Like, go get some friends together and go watch it. It's a pretty easy movie to digest. It's not, um you know, complicated with the plot lines. They just don't explain a lot of the plot, do you? They're just like, hey, we're going to go find that bird. Um, and yeah, it's easy enough to just kind of sit down and enjoy. Um, except for the emotional turmoil. Like the Luxray scene. I'm not going to say what happens, but if you've seen it, the, the bit with that boy and his Luxray. Oh my God. Like, why? <laughs> why would you do that to us? We're grown, we're grown damn adults and I can't even imagine how the kids would maybe kids are resilient they probably don't even they're like oh that's sad that was some heartstrings but yeah I mean like it's an easy enough movie to enjoy so do go check it out if you get the chance plus I mean the promo card if your area is still giving out the promo cards get amongst that because that's always exciting to have I still have my um, promo card from Pokemon 2000 in the VHS tape so yeah 
But yeah, all in all, it was a really good weekend. Um, fun to hang out with the squad, go play some arcade games and then watch a movie. It was just a really good time. If you guys have seen the Pokemon movie um, and you want to share your thoughts, please leave them down below. If we're going to talk about spoiler stuff, um, maybe like preface it with a big like spoilers in caps and asterisks so people that haven't actually seen it know that they're getting into spoiler zone. Um, so don't just comment like, oh, when Pikachu does this, it's really like give them a heads up. So um, if you want to chat about it, like I want to know your thoughts. Like, did you think it was amazing? Did you think it was average? Did you think it was like the worst thing you've ever seen in your life? Let me know. Um, but be, be kind about the spoilers. <laughs> Otherwise guys, be sure to stay tuned on Twitter and on Instagram for my daily goings on. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, feel free to share this with your friends and your loved ones and people that you think might enjoy uh, this review. And otherwise guys, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.